Hello everyone, my name is Laura Modali and welcome to Science for Education, supporting teaching and learning in science education. In today's episode, we are going to do a dissection activity with a sheep brain. Our goal is after watching this video, you will be able to identify each part of the mammal's brain and describe all their functions. The sheep brain I'm using here is from Carolina Biological Supplies. I have used Carolina's specimens many times in my STEM lab and science classes, even in my other anatomy videos. They sell high quality preserved specimens with natural lifelike appearance for educational use. You can use our affiliate link in the description area below to shop for your STEM and science classes or biology lab activities. Also, I have created activity sheets as a companion for you to get on board with me learning about mammal brains through this dissection video. You can get the activity sheets through the link in the video description below, or you may visit scienceforeducation.com. In this dissection activity, we will need a dissection tray, a scalpel, forceps, teasing needles, a magnifying glass and a sheep brain. Before we start tackling this brain and learn from it, as usual, let's put on our safety equipment, lab coat, gloves, and safety glasses. All right, let's do this. So first, we are going to observe the outer surface of the brain. There are three meninges that are layered up to cover the brain. The first layer is called the dura mater. This dura mater is thick and dense and covers the brain, but here on our specimen it has already been removed due to the preservation process. The other two layers are called pia and arachnoid. We are going to remove these thin layers gently with our forceps. It will take a while to remove the entire meninges, so if you do this in your classroom, you could just remove part of it so you can see the structure of the brain underneath. Underneath the layers, we will find the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest portion of the mammalian brain and is divided into two hemispheres by the medial longitudinal fissure. On this cerebral surface, you will see the grooves known as sulci, plural of sulcus, and the ridges that are called gyri, the plural of gyrus. In the cerebrum, you will find four lobes. Near the front of the brain is the frontal lobe that controls motor functions. Behind this lobe, you will find the parietal lobe, which is the one that is responsible to receive and process the somatic sensory information. Below the parietal lobe is the temporal lobe, the place where auditory sensations are received and processed. On the dorsal side of the cerebrum is the occipital lobe, which is the one that receives and processes sensation from the eyes. Then here we have the cerebellum, which is behind the occipital lobe of the cerebrum. The cerebellum controls balance and muscle coordination. I am going to place the brain on the tray with the ventral surface or the bottom side facing up. Here you will find the medulla that contains the centers for heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration, and also the reflex centers controlling coughing, sneezing, hiccuping, etc. Next, you will find the pons that contains nerve tracts that connect the cerebellum with the other parts of the brain and spinal cord. And here is the brain stem and the spinal cord. So here is the thing. When the brain was removed from the skull, the cranial nerves and the pituitary were cut. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And these nerves send signals to the brain of smells, vision, eye movements, face movements and expressions, taste and swallowing, hearing and balance, abdominal organs, and many more. The pituitary controls hormones, reproduction, etc. 
it is the master of the endocrine system. Even though we cannot see those nerves anymore, we can see the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb lies below the frontal lobe of the cerebellum and is where all the cell bodies that connect with the olfactory nerves are, which are the first cranial nerves. Next, let's look over here. This X-shaped structure is called the optic chasma. It is formed by the crossover of the right and the left optic nerves. The portion of the optic nerves has already been removed, but we can still see the optic chasma. Next, let's look at the inside part of the brain. So therefore, we are going to cut it into half. We are going to put the brain on the tray with the dorsal side facing up. We will use our fingers to part or widen the medial longitudinal fissure. I will insert the scalpel into the fissure and cut through the corpus callosum connecting the two cerebral hemispheres. We are going to continue to cut, dividing the cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem into two longitudinal halves. Each hemisphere contains a lateral ventricle, referred to as the first and the second ventricles. The lateral ventricles can be located by removing the septum pellucidum. The septum pellucidum is a thin transparent membrane located inferior to the corpus callosum on each hemisphere. Next, let's locate the third and fourth ventricles. The fourth ventricle connects to the central canal of the spinal cord. It is also connected to the third ventricle by a cerebral aqueduct. Here is the thalamus. This serves as the sensory relay. So most sensory nerves enter the thalamus and then their impulses will be sent to the appropriate cerebral area to continue to be processed there. This is the hypothalamus, the part that is responsible for regulation and maintenance of internal homeostasis, such as body temperature, appetite, fluid balance, etc. And over here, we have a pineal body. The function is to secrete melatonin. It controls the organism's melatonin levels in the blood. It releases the highest level of melatonin when there's darkness or during nighttime and then decreases it during daylight. Let's move on to the cut surface of the cerebellum. In the medial section over here, there is the white matter of the cerebellum that forms a branch tree-like pattern called the arbor vitae. Here between the thalamus and the pons, there is an area that contains important nerve tracts. It is called the dorsal area. This area is concerned with responses to visual and auditory stimuli. Now I'm going to make a cross section through one cerebral hemisphere just anterior to the thalamus. Here we can see the inner white matter and outer gray matter. The white matter contains all the nerve fibers in the brain that connect different areas of the brain to each other and to the spinal cord, so it is practically working like highways. The color is white because the nerve fibers are covered in protective sheath called myelin, which gives the tissue its white color. The gray matter contains lots of nerve fibers, which allows it to process and release information through the signals found in the white matter. That's all I have for you in today's episode. I hope you've had a good time learning about the mammal brain, different parts of the brain, and all their functions. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for science videos coming out every Monday. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.